uh, something called ebb and flow. So, so this, and this is my aquaculture, the fish production. When I flush the fish waste, uh, and I and I divide the buckets five gallon each, and that's the food I'm bringing from there to here, and that's why they become aquaponic because the only food these get is from the fish waste, just like they get it from there, but here manually, okay, instead of uh, so the research I'm interested in is instead of giving them fresh. Well, we call it fresh or unprocessed uh, fish waste. I digested them. I did 12 different treatments using different kind of bacteria and fungi and different pHs to see which one will give me the most nutrient in the liquid phase at the end of two weeks. Okay, so I measure it at the beginning and I measure it at the end. And I found that just adjusting it to pH 6.5 was enough to give me, which is great. I don't have to add bacteria. I don't have to do But it has to be aerobic digestion. You know, like you have to add an air pump so it keeps bubbling air instead of just put it in a tank and let it do its thing. That's anaerobic. It will rot and stink and all that. So this is decoupled. So I think this has a potential. Because I can go to, let's say you have a hydroponic greenhouse, I can go to your greenhouse and say, you know, for X amount of dollars, build a small building outside or a shipping container, put fish there, and then bring in 50 gallons a day from the fish uh, waste, and then feed your plant. You save X amount of your chemical fertilizer. You're still using chemical fertilizer because you see it's you're missing iron, you're missing magnesium, you're missing this and that. Uh, but you save X percent of your fertilizer, and hopefully that will be enough to, uh, to appeal to them to do it. A few years ago, a ton of fertilizer was 200, nobody cared. But now, a ton is 1,200, I hear you. Uh, people want to save money. Uh, when you sell it, 30 percent, you know, of course, 30% is an estimate. That's what I'd like to do, find exact numbers with this time. Okay, I uh, raise uh, tilapia. Those are the most popular fish in aquaponic because they're edible. They can tolerate high density fish. They can tolerate high pH, low pH. They can, uh, temperature drop, they can survive a few days. Uh, much better than, let's say, uh, catfish. Uh, but other universities are testing shrimp, like freshwater shrimp, uh, other animals uh, to see what they can do. Okay, so that is my aquaponic. Any questions on aquaponic? Yeah, in this system, how are you recycling the water? There's no recycling. I mean, there's no dumping out. I just add more water and of course, the five gallon I add is not enough. Once in a while, I have to add fresh water because the plants are using and evaporating, you know, evapotranspiration. So, uh, so and of course, Texas is hot, so in the summer I use a lot more. Sometimes uh, once a week, I add like uh, 20 gallons in each. In the winter, maybe every two or three weeks. So these are uh, plants. So like here, the aquaculture, the pH is five. There, the pH is uh, 6.5, okay? And that's why aquaponic will never take over hydroponic. We all said it's gonna take over, everybody will switch. It's never gonna happen because in aquaponic, the condition for the fish is not the ideal for the plants, so you have to have the medium. The fish are not happy and the plants are not happy, but they're both okay. And if anything happened to the fish, uh, there's no fertilizer for the plants. I mean, and so it's too much headache. Whereas this, you go to someone with hydroponic, you don't have to tell them learn anything new. They keep doing what they're doing. You just add the uh, food and then flush it and, you know, add it here. So less headache. What, what, how do you figure out the ratio? Like how, much, how much fish do you need? How much, you know, oh, there, we on? have all those formulas, yeah. you know, and usually backward. Like, uh, what's the production area? The production area, you need this many fish for this many plants, uh, and then uh, this many fish, well, then you need this much tank. You know, that go backwards. So how do you handle the, uh, 
all of a sudden it's a new product, new marketing. You know, is that easy for you know operations? It's to, easier for this. Yeah. Because remember, you're you're saving fertilizer yeah. with this. So you have a new product and you have to switch fertilizer. You switch fertilizer here. You just put 30% less. Let's say 30 is the magic number, but but you add the fish waste uh, here. Let's say you're growing this. You you're using uh, you know 10, 5, 10, but you switch to tomato, which you need 16, 10, 15. You switch to 16, 10, 15, but you add the fish with the fish. And of course here or here you have to measure the water quality and the nitrate level to see if you are where you want to be or you have to supplement more or less so is in commercial spaces are they they have automatic you know they have sensors in the water that's telling you what, yeah. what the of course okay. and and alarm yeah they have sensor for ph and for the uh, water pump or air pump Anything shuts down, the fish can die, especially yeah. air pump. So there are sensors and automatic dozers. You know, like you want pH 6, it will adjust the pH. I mean, 5 or even 4.5, the fish are happy, but they prefer 6. I mean, I leave it to nature, but, uh, you know, yes, you're right. Commercial operation, you don't, you, you, you want to eliminate any risk. So, particularly for the nutrient deficiency, we have to add that. No, we, I don't add this for nutrient deficiency. I add it for uh, some, uh, for food, some nutrients. Uh, for iron here, I have iron chelate that you spray for added in the water. But iron chelate absorbs well, and it will turn it green and it supplement that. So yes, you you spray or you add it to the water. So if, if we create the iron rate or something nutrient rate to both species and their paper matter, would it be efficient for the nutrients to the listing? I don't understand. I hear you yeah. sometimes. Say it again. If you create the nutrients that yes. are yeah, using magnesium or the iron to yeah. both species and their paper matter, which will be sold by in the water if we let it put it. And Why you want to add it with the fish? It's not going to help the fish at all. Yeah. You just put it here where the plants need it. Yeah. Now that is connected to the fish, so if you spray it, maybe some will go to the fish. Ah, it's not going to hurt the fish. But uh, you don't put it there, the fish don't need it. You just put it here where the plants need it. What yeah. I mean to say is that just to maintain the nutrient to the no. fish. No, it doesn't no. need nutrient. No. Uh, the fish need protein. You know, the nutrient, the minerals are byproduct of the protein digestion and all that. Not. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is my uh, uh, aquaponic research and, and flood and drain that works on the siphon system, okay? So it's now, the only electricity here is the water pump. Okay, okay no, no uh, air pump because the plants, it fills up to here, so the roots are drowning in water, but then it drains, so they are exposed to air. So they're always fed air. Fed, so they're fine. You you adjust that by that plant age. So if you put little seedlings in here, no. okay, it's always flooding and draining at the same time. I see. Okay. Yeah. What? So I guess this is the next question. Um, from a you know from a research and extension standpoint, right? How, how did you sort of work through the process of designing this? for something that would be beneficial for your research? Like how did you, you know, did you have different sort of, like there was a, a first prototype of sort of organizing and designing this, oh. and you're like, oh, all right, yeah. you're gonna get a little bit better, and a little bit better, and a little bit better, and then it's gonna... Yeah, improve. my original system was a home built, uh, like home design and home built, yeah. because I was working with homeowners. Uh, this is a commercial type system, a small scale commercial, so I worked with the Symbiotic Aquaponic Company, and I bought it from them, uh, from the grant that I received, because I didn't want to. I wanted to build something more accurate than this. But yeah, um, like anybody else, you research, you study, and you see what design you want. Uh, but uh, they were on the proposal, and we, uh, the, the project, bought it from them, and they supplied consultation for a while. That's awesome. What? So yeah. 
what opportunities do you think there are right here in, in Texas for you know small scale and large scale application of this research? Um, all the questions I get are from small scale or hobbyists. Okay. I don't see like a large scale operation that wants to do aquaponics. Right. It's a, like a hobby or a school. They want to put a small system and learn for, for fun, for, edu for personal consumption, things like that. So yeah, there's a lot of interest uh, in aquaponics. Okay, we can go to that side.